G'day ladies and gents, Kirk Muta here for a video which has been well anticipated amongst those of you intrigued by autocrafters. Just to clarify, these autocrafters are true autocrafters, only attainable using carpet mod features. For more information, I have other videos introducing these contraptions in detail. However, in this video, I want to take you on a journey of the challenges in designing and building a redstone contraption. But first, here it is. The Universal Autocrafter. Now, I'm not just going to showcase this design because of a few reasons. First of all, it was my very first technical build in the modern redstone meta, and since then being a part of Ilmanga's Patreon, and then eventually being invited to SciCraft, I have learned a lot, so the design is far from optimal. Second of all, the design is not as user friendly as it should be. It is quite easy to break, requiring player intervention making it unsuitable for use by players who do not have a technical understanding of how it works. So if you're wondering why this video took so long, it was because every time I looked at this design, I was rather disappointed. Having actually used this design in survival, I knew it was a hassle, and simply making a video showcasing it would not be enough. So instead, we're going to tear this down and start again. Here we actually have an advantage. Hours upon hours of qualitative data, which will educate us on how to make the design better. So let's start here, on the Skullbuck server, where we have been using the Autocrafter in survival for a few months now. Let's have a look at the interface for the current design. It features 9 inputs for shulker boxes of ingredients laid out in a line. Shulker boxes of dummy items are provided for slots to be skipped. Then the crafted items are loaded into boxes and sent to the output. This is great for bulk crafting jobs of a single item. But in reality, the items you want to craft require several steps, or you may want to craft different items in a single job. For example, one of the most common recipes is redstone components such as repeaters and comparators. These require redstone torches which often need to be crafted as well. However, the autocrafter can only handle a single item type for each job, meaning you would need to first craft the redstone torches, then set up the next job manually. This made usage of the autocrafter quite prohibitive at times. Another issue occurs when an invalid recipe appears at the input. There are two reasons this can happen. First of all, if the player makes a mistake and puts the wrong item in a slot. Or, if some boxes are only partially filled, meaning that some slots run out before the others. This results in the shock box loaders jamming, as the invalid recipe forces the ingredients to be extracted from the crafting tables. This requires the player to go through the system and manually clean it out. I actually tried to fix this by introducing a system which detects when the output has dissimilar items in it, but this doesn't work reliably due to a bug making weighted pressure plates unreliable. But let's put these frustrations aside for the time being and focus on making a new and better design.
hit our first crossroads. To start with, I've rebuilt the feed tape mechanism used in the current design. This moves two sets of crafting tables every 8 game ticks, meaning the machine makes 18,000 crafting attempts every hour. I then experimented with a way to make this faster using a smart piston engine. This new feed tape is 1.5 times faster than before, allowing the machine to make 24,000 crafting attempts every hour. At first glance, you might think that the fast option would be better, but we also need to consider other things. From this we will learn that faster does not equal better. First of all, how are we going to get items from our input to the crafting tables? For this we use droppers, which shoot the items into the crafting tables at each stage of the recipe. A dropper can handle an item every 4 game ticks, however, a hopper can only handle an item every 8 game ticks. But our new feed tape is moving every 6 game ticks, which is exactly halfway between these two values. This makes things very awkward, as the rate in which the crafting tables will consume items is greater than a single hopper, but less than two hoppers combined. So what we will have is an imbalance of items at our inputs. We also must consider how we will remove the crafted items. This is a much bigger issue due to crafting yields, which causes different recipes to craft at different speeds. For example, if I craft a piston, 9 items yields 1 piston. This counts as a single crafting attempt. But, if you craft glass panes, Six items yields 16 glass panes. And once again, this is a single crafting attempt. Because each crafting attempt is done at hopper speed, yielding 16 items means you need 16 hoppers to collect the resulting items. As you can see, the hoppers extend far beyond the push limit of our feed tape. Fortunately, this issue can be mitigated by using hopper minecarts. Here they are aligned such that one hopper minecart is in fact shared between four hoppers. But even with this trick, our faster setup becomes excessive. There isn't even space for the dummy item filters. And we want a universal order crafter, which means it should handle any recipe. So is the 50% boost in speed worth it in this case? Absolutely not. So now we've determined the optimal crafting speed, all the other components will fall into place and we can get a working machine built.
we're finally done. Well, not quite. After about two hours, I've completely rebuilt the Universal Auto Crafter, refining many of the components along the way. For example, the old design used these one by tileable shulker box unloaders. Not only can these not handle empty boxes, but they can also interfere with each other. Which is why I opted for this design adapted from Samus the Sage. It can handle empty boxes, and it also locks the input, only taking a box at a time. Some other refinements include reducing the amount of hopper minecarts in our item collection, as well as a dummy item filters, but also compactifying the shulker box loaders a bit. There are also two incompleted features, for example, here we have an automated shulker box stacker. So this only works with the carpet rule of stackable shulker boxes, whereas when you throw shulker boxes on the ground, they will in fact stack together, and this way you can create stacks of 64 of empty shulker boxes in order to compactify the storage of empty boxes. I also haven't fully connected up the dummy item return system, so this would need to lead to some shulker box loaders that would load up some boxes of dummy items ready for the player to use them for a recipe. Now you might be wondering what this red circuit behind me indicates. This is the startup sequence. This is a very important component of the auto crafter. You see, without a startup sequence, all of our droppers start filled with our ingredients. Then when the feed tape begins to move, all of our crafting tables are initially empty. So every single ingredient goes into the first slot of the crafting table, creating up to eight invalid recipes at the very beginning of the crafting job. These invalid recipes result in garbage spewing out of the output, which clogs up our shulker box loaders. In order to mitigate this issue, we have a counter circuit which increments the signal strength of this redstone wire by one every time the feed tape completes a cycle. This incrementation is thus perfectly synchronized with our feed tape. So each time a crafting table moves a single block, it powers a set of rails activating the observer, retracting the composter, unpowering the activator rail, which was previously locking the hopper minecart, which was holding back the ingredients corresponding to each crafting slot. This ensures that there is a single crafting table somewhere in the feed tape, which receives all the items in the correct order on startup. So this eliminates the potential for invalid recipes. You also be wondering why we need this massive bulk off the back of the auto crafter. These are all of the shulker box loaders required to handle every single recipe in the game. The issue is once again with the crafting yields. We need up to 16 hoppers per crafting table line, which in total is 32 hoppers. So around the back here, this is a one wide tileable double hopper speed shulker box loader, which I designed specifically for the auto crafter. Because it's double speed and we require 32 hopper speeds worth, we have 16 slices of the shulker box loader. This additional module off the back of the shulker box loader it keeps track of which shulker boxes have items in them. So that at the very end of the recipe, once all of these clocks have completed, which means that there are no more items to be loaded, it will depower this line, which will then trigger this observer line and any slices which have partially filled boxes will automatically be ejected. Now in order to handle any crafting yields from one item per crafting operation up to 16 items per crafting operation, what will tend to happen is the inflow of items will be too much for a single slice to handle. What will happen is 
this hopper mine cart will fill up with items and then the items will flow over to the next slice and so on. The issue with this is that as the items progress onwards, each slice gets progressively less and less and less items. So you get this very strange pattern with the shock box loading. The first slice will fill up a box and then partially fill up a second box. And then it will decay logarithmically as you go through all the slices until you get to slices which never actually filled up a box. So these would have only had partially filled boxes until you get to the very end, which barely received any items. Unfortunately, there is no way to mitigate this without some complicated system. However, using the automated partially filled box detection, the maximum amount of partially filled box you'll get from any crafting jobs is equal to the crafting yields that you get from the recipe that you're using. So in this case, crafting iron bars, there will be a maximum of 16 partially filled boxes that you'd need to merge their contents together after the crafting job. Finally, let us ask ourselves what to do next. Unfortunately, I'm out of time for this video, so you'll have to wait until next time, but here is what I have planned. This large space was previously taken up by the box loaders, but now it's reserved for a system which will allow the user to schedule different recipes one after the other and program them such that each consecutive recipe receives the results from the previous recipes. This will also require shulker box mergers for our output to ensure that the crafted ingredients are balanced for the next recipe. I'll also try to work on ways to detect and mitigate invalid recipes due to player error, as these mistakes can cost a lot of resources if handled incorrectly. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for the next installment for an improved Universal Order Crafter.